Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about one-on-one -on -one roleplay characters. This is part three of my one-on-one -on -one roleplay Bible series. The first time we talked about rules, then we talked about setting and plot, and now we're going to talk about characters. So in the plot and setting video, a lot of the stuff that we talked about is good for you if you're somebody that really goes off of plot and setting and makes a new character every single time that you roleplay. But what if you're somebody that has a cast of characters and you play those characters over and over and over in different roleplays? If that's the case, then you probably want a character-centric one-on-one Bible. So either it's been happening since the beginning of the video or it's happening now, but basically what I'm doing is linking up in the card all of the other videos that you're going to want to watch before this one, and that includes all of the one-on-one -on -one roleplay Bible videos as well as the character bio video. Understanding how to write character bios is critical to having a good character-based one-on-one roleplay Bible. For the character-focused one-on-one roleplay Bible, what I recommend doing is making a list of all of the characters that you want to play, and then underneath each character name, writing a bio based on what I talked about in the character bios video. Remember, this document is all about inspiring people to want to roleplay with you. So what that means is if you have longer character bios, don't get rid of them, just put them somewhere else. Don't put them in the Bible. These longer bios can serve two really good purposes, so that's why we don't want to get rid of them. So the first purpose is for your own reference and making sure that you're staying on task with your character, particularly if it's been a while since you played that character and you want to start to recapture them. The other main reason that you might want those longer bios is if someone expresses a deep interest in one of your characters, they might really benefit from reading that longer bio. So, in addition to the bio, there are other things about the characters that are useful for potential partners to know, so let's cover those. It's helpful for potential partners to know a character's shipping status. So what does that mean? Is the character single ship? This means that they already have a relationship and they're not really willing to start a ship with other characters, but they might be open to platonic threads or platonic plots with other characters. Is the character multi-ship. What that means is that they don't have one particular set ship, and every single different roleplay that they do is considered separate, and they might have different partners in those different roleplays. It's also helpful to include the character's status for being available to roleplay in general. Maybe the character is open. This means that you're actively looking for plots and threads with this character. Maybe the character is closed, so you're not interested in starting new plots or threads with this character. Or maybe the character is selective. This means they're kind of in between opened and closed. So they're open in the sense that you do want new plots and threads for them, but you're picky in some way about exactly which ones you want to accept for that character. These statuses are going to help people that are skimming through your Bible and looking at your character list determine which characters they should be asking for, as in which characters you're more likely to say yes or be excited about adding to the roleplay. What else might you want to include about the character? Appearance is something that will probably come to mind. Usually when you're actually roleplaying with someone, appearance doesn't come up in your posts. However, people tend to want to know what your character looks like. So in your one-on-one -on -one roleplay Bible, it's good to include the appearance so people have an image in their head of what the character looks like, since it's unlikely to come out in the writing. This can be achieved through all of the normal methods, so face claim, reference art, or a description of what the character looks like. Whatever way you choose, just keep it consistent throughout your document. It doesn't really matter. What matters is you're communicating to your partner, this is what I feel my character looks like. Another thing to include for the character is things that are important to the character but don't necessarily get included in the bio. So I'll give you an example of this gender and sexuality. So we said in one of some of the other previous Bible videos, one-on-one -on -one roleplay for the most part is about shipping. It, it is, whether it is for you or not, in general it is. So including the character's gender and sexuality can be important for that. 
I also like to include some associations I have with the character. So for example, maybe a song I associate with the character, or maybe their Patronus in the Harry Potter world, or maybe their favorite food, or things like that. These are not really critical to include. Just for me, it helps like aesthetically explain the mood that I'm going for with that character. Another thing you might consider including, and this is totally optional, but a description of the character's personality. Now, I don't find this particularly helpful when it comes to canon characters, and not even super helpful for um, fandom OCs either, but if you have a lot of fandom-less original characters, I think including a personality can be helpful because there's not a fandom to tie it to, so you don't really know necessarily the mood that they're going for. So adding a personality in addition to the bio for those characters can be helpful. What including this is going to do is help make sure that people understand what sort of experience they're going to get if they choose to role play with that character. For example, if the character is generally shy or standoffish or mean, we know as role players that those characters are harder to interact with and build stories with. And what can happen sometimes is if you don't fully understand that going into the role play, finding that out through the interactions can be a little bit disheartening. So what including the personality can do if you have a character that's often misinterpreted based on their bio is ensure that people go into those interactions with eyes wide open and they understand exactly what they're going to get and they aren't disappointed. On the subject of canon characters, if you're playing one that's canon divergent, this is also something that I recommend including. So this should either be labeled or described in the bio exactly what things are different in your version of the canon. Stating what makes your character different than the canon version of the character can ensure that people who are messaging you to role play and they're all excited about finding so somebody that's playing a particular canon character, but then they get in with yours and they realize this isn't what they wanted because it's not divergent in a way that they can understand. So including this is helpful to make sure that we're not disappointing people. And also keep in mind, a lot of people are excited by seeing canon divergent characters. So adding that could be something good in your advertisement. So in the plot and settings video, we talked about shorter ways to talk about your plots and settings. So what are the shorter ways when it comes to characters? Well, if you play lots of canon characters, for example, you can get away with just listing the names of your characters and nothing else. And people can easily skim through that and pick out the characters. Now, that being said, something to keep in mind is if this is all you have, you're probably going to get more messages than someone that lists bios and personalities and all of that stuff. So potentially that's more people messaging you that you have to end up turning down. But if you don't mind having to have those conversations with people and potentially declining them, this can be a great way to attract a lot of partners. If you don't play canon characters, you can do something simple using character archetypes. I'm going to read one to you. So this is an example. Say you have a bad boy original character. Maybe he's listed like this. Uh, name, Jax Carter, FC, Jared Leto, age, I don't know, however old Jared Leto is. Um, and then label, bad boy. Using this method, you can list a lot of characters without having to write those bios. And if your characterization for your characters is a little bit more fluid from roleplay to roleplay, this might work for you. Okay, so that's the explicit character pieces. Now when it comes to the character-centric roleplay one-on-one Bible, I do recommend having a little bit of plot and setting stuff in there, not just have it be all about characters. So think about the particular things you're interested in doing with each character, and list those things under the character information as a wish list. You can use any of the methods that I talked about in the plot and setting video, it doesn't matter, but putting them under wish list, what that's going to do is when people message you, they can message you with an exact idea. Like, hey, I liked this verse for this character. And that facilitates the plotting conversation before you start role playing beautifully. So what else do you guys like to show about your character when you're talking about putting them in a one-on-one -on -one role play? Let me know down below. And whatever you think of, that's the type of stuff that's going to go in your particular Bible. And remember to like if you like this video, comment down below with any questions that you have, subscribe for more videos, click the bell for notifications, all the links to my social media down in the doobly-doo. Thank you so much for watching and make it a great day.